Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to teach you how to paint this really cute pickup truck with a bunch of pumpkins in the back. So this is a great painting for fall um, that really works well for Halloween and extends all the way into Thanksgiving. So it's a wonderful timeless message. And of course, you can make it last all year long if you want to do something different in the bed of the pickup truck, you certainly can. Um, you could just do roses or something simple like that too. Uh, so there's lots of fun options with this. And we have different kits on our website that do have options of just roses. Um, but today, because it is fall, we're gonna go ahead and stick with this really wonderful um, fall look with all the pumpkins. So I've got some different color schemes that I'll be doing. I've got the gray here in the back. Um, and I'm gonna also show you how to finish up lettering on that one. And then I've got the black background. And then today we're working on this one too. So, and I'm not even sure which color I'm going to do. <laughs> so we will see. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. All right, so first let me go ahead and talk about um, the tools that we provide for you to be able to do this. And hello, hello, hi Cindy. And I see a bunch of other people on there too. Welcome, welcome. All right, so we have this awesome template here for you. And you know what, it's kind of dark. I need to turn on the uh, lights. Ah, oh, that's gonna be so much better, hold on. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Okay, I was like, it's a little dark in here. That's better, yay, light, 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 let there be light. Okay, so, all right, so let's go ahead and continue talking about all of our wonderful tools. All right, so we have this beautiful traceable that makes it so, so much easier. And I went ahead and did mine. I worked ahead so that you wouldn't have to just sit here and watch me draw for an hour. It doesn't take that long, I'm just kidding, but it does take, it seems like it when you're watching somebody else on video. All right, so we have this traceable that comes to you. We provide the really fun glitter tape, the graphite paper, there's a bunch of other stuff too, but for this stage, this is what you get. So, and what is it? Oh, here we go. See how cute that is? And there's all different colors. And then we'll also provide you with a color pencil. Now the magic of a color pencil with this is that you can see where you have been. So if you were to just use like a black pen or a pencil, you would start to trace all this and then you might lose track of where you had drawn the line. So that's the beauty of a color pencil, which we provide for you in the kit. That way you can definitely see where you've been, see the work that you've done. So I do all that first. And again, I just secure it, keep it steady with the tape. And then make sure, here's a helpful tip um, with the graphite paper. So with the graphite paper, you want to make sure that the dull side faces you. And you wanna make sure that the shiny side, this is what makes the transfer, you wanna make sure that that shiny side faces the canvas, and then you'll be all set. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, so you can see the magic here. Let's go ahead and take that off. All right, so there we go. And by the way, this graphite paper is uh, reusable for quite a few uses for different things, so that's helpful too. So you can use it for other fun projects. All right, so now we've got a great start here. Now, initially when you do your graphite trace, it will look very light, just like pencil on paper. And you are welcome to leave it like that. That's an optional way to do things. Um, however, I have gone ahead we also give you a permanent marker in your kit. I prefer to go ahead and reinforce all those lines with a Sharpie or permanent marker. So it just really helps it all pop out, keeps my boundaries intact. It also bleeds through the paint in many cases, which I find to be helpful. It keeps you from having to do a lot of tedious cut-in work. And let me give you an example of that. So like on this one, making sure that stays. You can see how I was able to do this nice little whitewash in the background, and you can see how the Sharpie just bled right through. So that will make it very easy for me to come back in and do all that line work later. So that's the benefit of going ahead and doing the Sharpie lines. And again, it allows me to just kind of wash through, get nice solid coats of paint on first, and not have to worry too much about a lot of tedious cutting work. So that's the benefit of it. It really helps 
beginners. A um, lot of experience with beginners has taught me that they do appreciate it, that more, like, more cases than not, they actually really like uh, being able to have the Sharpie and help it stay. And my music quit. Don't quit on me. Oh no. I got it. My son called and he turned off my happy music. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see here. Now, let's talk about our more tools with our kit here too. All right, so we have these beautiful paints that you get. And let's see. My son is calling me. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? It's so good to have your children call you. He doesn't know I'm live though. Hold on, I better tell him. Hold on, see, I've got my little, uh, this is the other thing about live. It's it's um, candid. Um, oh, now he's trying to FaceTime me. I might just bring him on. I mean, on my computer. Actually, I'm not sure. That might cut y'all off, so I don't want to do that. Let me do this. Let me message him real quick and tell him. Oh, you know what he's saying? He goes, holy moly, Mom, you're amazing. Isn't that wonderful? All right, hold on. Hi, sweetie. I love you, and I am on Facebook Live Teaching. We'll call you in a few. All right, so he's very excited because it was his birthday, and I got him a an iPhone 11 for his birthday. So he's telling me how happy he is with me right now. <laughs> okay, um, all right, so back to painting. All right, so that's what we're here for. All right, so this beautiful paint that comes with the kits, all right, and then we have the brush set. We have Mama, and then Little Buddy, and then Little Bit, and then I encourage you to get some like napkins nearby, and then like rags, wash rags, paper towels, all that happy stuff. All right, and then we're gonna get, I've got all my, oh, a bucket of water or a cup of water, and then we're all set here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to start with my, what do I wanna start with here? Let's go ahead and start with the background, and I'm gonna go ahead and do like a light wash in the background, just to make it really easy. So I've got a lot of white here to help me get going. And then we'll need a little bit of the Mars black. All right, so just a teeny amount, not much. All right, so just a little bit there. And then I'll just actually just push just a teeny amount in there for this. All right, and we're going to use my mama brush. And then again, just a real small amount. So let's go ahead and just do, let's start that small, super small, and then push that into the white. Just push it back and forth. I just want a really nice light, light gray here. All right, so really pretty light gray. And then I'm just going to sweep this back and forth. Just back and forth. Uh, one other thing I'll tell you too is if you do really love the black background, then you don't have to worry about doing any of this lettering to begin with. You will waste all your time. If you can just imagine, that is one thing a Sharpie will not show through. It will, you'll just lose all that hard work and you'll be probably kind of sad. Or you'll just have a glass of wine and not care anymore. <laughs> just move along and then just redo it. Yeah, the, the technique that you'll have to do if you do the black is just not do that in the beginning. And then I would recommend taking one of the traceables that we give you, cutting out just the words and then taping that on when you're all the way done at the very end and then you can actually transfer it at the very end too, because that graphite will show up over the black. It's actually lighter than the black and you'll be able to see it right over the top. You'll just have to make sure and wait and do it at the very end when it's completely dry. 
All right, so I'm just gonna sweep this through. And don't worry about this, it will bleed through nicely and I'll be able to redefine it later. So this is a really nice way, especially while I'm filming, it keeps the pace of the class really fast. That way I don't lose any of that trace and you don't have to watch me rework it all again. It'll bleed right through and then I'll just be able to paint right over the top at the very end, so that's nice. All right, now as I sweep this back and forth, you can change it up a little bit. You can add little like shades of darker gray in here so you can go ahead and push into maybe a little bit more black and pull that through the wet paint using the flat side of the brush. Just kind of pull that all the way through. So it kind of looks like old weathered wood that kind of runs through. This is a nice look, especially if maybe you're trying to create that look of like a shiplap happening in the background. Anyway, just take that back and forth. So create some nice variety and that would be you can, as you can maybe just imagine, if you were trying to worry about cutting in around your letters and having to continually stop and work in and around, you'd have a lot of broken areas that look like dried and like they didn't blend well with the rest of the look. So it's really nice to have that freedom to just be able to sweep all the way through here. So I'm gonna do this all the way through. This is another, uh, so some people like to create sunsets too in their background. And that's another great use for the Sharpie or the permanent marker rather that bleeds through so that you can work in that sunset. So and it looks scary, looks like maybe I'll lose it, but I won't, it's gonna stay there for me. And because this is so light and neutral, then it'll be really easy. See, now I don't have to worry about cutting in all around the truck. So again, nice and easy for beginners. Now, if you just penciled on this design, you would actually end up covering it all up. Now, if you don't have a permanent marker and you wanna be able to accomplish this whole sweep through, another option is just to paint all the background on first, sweep it on side to side, let it completely set up and dry, and then use your graphite paper over the top and then do your transfer over the top. That's another really fun, easy way to do it. and very effective. And the only reason why I don't do that is just because we would have such a long time waiting for it to set up and dry that I don't want people to have to just sit here. So that's why I do it this way and then it just bleeds through and it all works. So again, just a nice horizontal stroke, just back and forth. In order to keep the brush strokes from ever being too choppy, I also try to make sure that I extend that brush stroke all the way across and I don't really lift off pressure until I'm just completely off the canvas. So all the way through, back and forth. And I make sure that I alternate with a lot of white too. So I'm basically going back and forth with a lot of pure white, gray, and then every once in a while, I'll pull in just a little tiny amount of the black. All right, so Beautiful, beautiful. We have a nice, lovely 
wash of gray over the surface area. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and place this brush into the bucket of water. I don't have time to get to it right now, but, and that's a good little rule too. If these are acrylic paints, they set up and dry in about five minutes, usually five to 10 minutes. So you never wanna just leave them sitting out on your plate like that. You wanna always make sure and put them in the water until you get a chance to clean them off because they will dry and harden and become sticks as opposed to brushes. And we don't want sticks, we want brushes. All right. Now, moving forward with color. So in my case, I can move forward pretty quickly because I'm gonna go ahead and do a turquoise truck this time. And that color mix uh, blends very well with any residual wet gray that might be left over, so I don't have to worry about that. However, if I were moving forward with red, I would not be able to do so because red does not play well with gray, it makes mauve. Um, so if you're working at home and you wanna move forward with um, a red truck over the top, you have to make sure and let this completely set up and dry. If you're impatient, I would suggest the outdoors or hair dryer or something like that. Um, but it usually acrylic paint sets up pretty quickly again, just like five to 10 minutes, so you're all good. But you do have to let it set up and completely dry before moving on to any of the oranges or reds because they will not blend very well with the gray. However, in our case, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with some turquoise. So let's talk about how to mix that up. A um, couple of different ways with our paint kit, a traditional with most colors or most, you know, paints at home, we're going to start with three equal parts, blue, green, and white. So I've got a primary cyan blue, and then I have a cadmium green, all right, and then just white. Uh, so I'm going to use my mama brush. Let's see, I've got one over here. All right, so again, about three equal parts, so I'm going to do a nice big dollop of the white. And then let's go ahead and get about a nickel size dollop of this blue, just like that. And then let's do some of this cadmium green, about a nickel size dollop. Again, we were kind of, what we're striving for is just about three equal parts here like that. Now before I mix this up, I also want to show you one beautiful color too. This is more of a teal color, but really pretty as an accent. This is called Viridian. It's lovely. And this is also in the kit here too. So, isn't that gorgeous? That is such a pretty color. So that can be a nice accent. And you can also add just a little bit of white to this and I want to show you what that starts to look like again much more of a, like a teal color but you can add a little bit of this blue to that and that makes a very striking turquoise or most people just have these three color combinations at home they just have this very you know traditional most paint sets have these basic colors so if you just do like equal parts here of the white and the blue and the green, you're gonna get lots of turquoise this way as well. And again, that was the cyan blue, cadmium green, and just titanium white. All right, so very pretty, and I might want this to be a little bit lighter, so you can kinda of adjust this according to your taste and what you like, but I'm gonna lighten this up just a little bit. All right, so I'm really liking that. Also, if you want it to be a bit more teal, then you can add more viridian, or you can add a little bit more of that green. Cadmium green will also pull it back to more of a teal too. All right, so we've got a really nice look here happening, and I'm gonna go ahead and start to work into the pickup truck. Now, I've got my mama brush now. It's a half inch flat, and I'm gonna go ahead and just sweep this on over the top. I'll hold the brush more with that line edge when I'm doing the edge work. And then working into the fullness of the vehicle here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that brush more over to the side. So line edge here. 
And then again, when you want to fill in and get more of an opaque finish and feather out those brush strokes, then make sure and basically turn the handle more parallel to the canvas. And that will give you much better coverage over the surface. So trying to optimize the line edge of this brush as much as possible. All right, now it's getting to be tiny, <laughs> little tiny areas. So this is becoming awkward. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my mama brush in the water. And then let's go ahead and shift gears to little buddy. Where's the, there's one. Okay, so little buddy brush. So it's just a tiny little flat. I'm gonna go ahead and keep pushing into that turquoise color. And see, this is small enough to where I can start to really work into these tiny little areas. And I may even have to switch to my little bit as well in some of these really tiny areas in here. But when we get to that, I'll switch. I'm gonna, I always just try to use as big of a brush as I can. It keeps um, less brush strokes and better finish over the surface area. Got a line edge here, so I'll hold the brush just again like a line. And then on this little curve here, you just kind of follow it, a little bit of a curve. Still using the line edge of the brush. And by that, I just mean like I'll give this some firm pressure and see how you can see there's a line edge there. So I use that as much as I can to help work around the lines of this design. to the place where I may have to switch to my little bit brush. We'll see, getting real close. These are little tail lights. So I'll avoid those. All right. And this is where it's starting to be a little more of that T90 stuff. And I don't really want to lose the detail of what's happening. So let's shift gears now to my little bit brush. All right, now one other thing here too is that 
with smaller brushes and this really thick paint, sometimes you run into a dry brush effect. And so sometimes it's helpful to add just a little bit of water, just a tiny amount in with the paint. But the caution here is that I would say for all beginners, make sure you turn it flat before you start to experiment with water. Uh, playing with water is actually lovely for beginners because it helps it helps the paint be more fluid, helps it move better on the canvas. But again, the key is flat, which is usually pretty easy because most beginners don't have easels even. They're just laying it on their uh, kitchen table or uh, desk. So again, as long as it's flat, you can add a lot of water to it and play with different styles and give it almost even a watercolor look. But the danger of keeping it in a vertical position like that and playing with water is you'll get water runs and then they, uh, well, they just basically erase through paint. They can be really kind of tricky to help correct even. So again, keep it flat and you'll be safe. All right, so I'm gonna push into a little bit of water, teeny, teeny, tiny amount, because I am working in a vertical and I'll push this into that turquoise and I've got my little bit brush now. And then I want to go ahead and work this into these smaller areas. I'll try to bring this a little bit closer so you can see it while I work. And you can also see why I like to do as little as possible with the smaller brush just because the smaller brush is, it's just a little bit harder to control and manipulate. And also it creates lots of tiny little lines in the paint. So you wanna just keep that part of it very minimal for just those really small areas. So I'm basically just cutting in and around little pumpkin stems, little leaves. Let's see. Uh, I got going on there. Okay, so here's the stem. I gotta figure out what I've got. There's a stem there. Top of the pumpkin. There's a little this is basically the side part of the pickup truck. Curve up for on top of the pumpkin there. And I've got little tiny curly cues and some stems. And I'm a little bit sloppy in the overcoat over those stems and, not the stem rather, I'm sorry, the um, leaves because I'm, I'm just going to actually repaint over the top with the leaves. Because it'll probably bleed through here in a minute. And it's just really easier just to go ahead and paint those again right on top. All right, so now I feel like I've got all of my lovely turquoise track done. Awesome, all right, so good start. And let me show you one more thing here. So let's get close on this. This is a tiny area and as I get close, you can see how a little bit of dry brush thing happened there. You see peekaboo happening with the canvas. So that is definitely an area where that tiny amount of water that I talked about, a little bit of water in the belly of the brush and then pushing that into our turquoise again, makes that more fluid. And then let's go over that one more time. And that will definitely fill in now with much greater ease. 
with a little bit more water. So I'm going to fill back in here too. All right, so that really helps a lot. Again, working at home, this is that time don't do as I do. Hold it flat when you do, and you add a little bit of water. All right. Okay, so we have a great foundation now with our beautiful gray background. Now we have our beautiful turquoise truck. And then let's go ahead and start to work in some of our awesome orange pumpkins. Okay, so move this over here. All right, now orange, orange, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so we have uh, cadmium orange. There it is. Don't y'all love this groovy music? This is uh, copyright free music. <laughs> I try to pick the happiest stuff I could find, but some of it I, I listen to and I go, wow, <laughs> this is crazy music. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, cadmium yellow. All right, so we'll have a little fun mix of both of those. And then I have a little bit of white off to the side, so I might even wanna lighten up a little bit with some of that cadmium yellow too, that'll be fun. All right, so I'm going to use my little buddy again. There's little buddy, there he is. All right, so here's little buddy. And then let's do some of this orange. Let's add a little bit of that cadmium yellow to that too. Let's brighten it up a little bit. And then we will push into this shape. I'm gonna do as much as I can with the big brush. And I'm gonna to have to come in with my smaller brush here in a moment and help refine the details. Just gets a little bit too little. Little too little. But as much as I can, I wanna get a nice good coat on over the surface in the largest part of the pumpkin. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to a little bit brush. Get a nice mix of that cadmium yellow and the orange. And if your brush gets too filled with paint and it starts to become a little bit fat and hard to work with, do a little twist in between your fingertips, just like this. That'll rotate it into a nice fine point. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this little tiny, tiny area. And I've got these little leaves right here in the center, so I'm gonna cut in and around those. And then as I work in towards the center of the pumpkin, I'll just kind of lightly feather this out. Holding that brush more like this over to the side. All right, so a beautiful start there. I think that might be a little bit, I missed a little spot there. Yeah, I need to come in underneath these little leaves here.
beautiful. Okay, so now, all right, let's do some green, some green for the leaves. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a really pretty sage this time. So let's start with some cadmium green. This little dime size amount. All right, and using my little bit brush, I will add just a touch of white and then a tiny little touch of black. And I need a lot more white. So I'm gonna take my little buddy brush here and pick up a nice big dollop of the white. And then let's mix that all together. So basically it's like mixing gray and green. And then this will give you a really pretty sage. This is really pretty for fall. So a nice cool sage color. And again, that is cadmium green, white and black. Uh, the color mix on this in, in terms of proportion, again, a much um, bigger dollop of the white. And you wanna just treat your black as though you just touch into it. So full dollop of white and then pea size amount of the green and then just a tiny touch of the black. And definitely pre-mix this on your plate so that you're happy with the consistency of it. You've got just the right shade there. All right, so I can do a little twist. That gives me a nice fine point. And then I can go ahead and start to paint into these little leaves here. And again, lots of little twists is really important on this one to get that point refined. To take it all the way out to the tip of the leaf. Okay, and I've got little stems up there too. So. Turquoise covers a lot better, so I'm not seeing as much bleed through on the permanent marker. So if that does happen to you, I'm gonna go ahead and teach this little stem in terms of freehanding. So basically you just make a little curve, a little simple little curve here. And then at the end of that curve, I'm gonna make a little loop and then come back to the center. And then same thing here, curve and then a loop and then come back to the center. And then the tiny little leaves on the sides, you come up and just do a tiny little loop and then come back to the center. And you wanna make sure that this is a diagonal loop off to each side. And then we can do our little stems too on the pumpkins here. All right, so a little curve here. I might wanna make these a little bit wider, more white. I'm also gonna show you, you may have brown at home, but if you don't, I'm gonna teach you how to mix it up too. So we might wanna add a little bit of the brown to the stem, or you can just leave it light like this. But a lot more, I'm liking the lighter, really light sage to the stem. And then also with more white mixed in with this, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of an accent 
right in the middle of all these little leaves. And then if you want to come back in and soften it a little bit with a bit of an overlap, come right back in with that sage and do like halfway over the top. And that does a nice soft blend of that white into that shape. But it still leaves a little bit of that accent. But a soft fade of it into the leaf. All right, now let's mix up some brown. All right, so brown is cadmium red. Let's just do a little pea-sized amount of that. And then primary yellow. And just a little pea size amount. Here's what we're going with this. And then, da -da -da, new black. Where is my black? There it is. Yeah. Where's black? Okay. All right, so about three equal parts there. We'll see how I did. I'll see you here in a minute. All right, so I'm just gonna, yeah, let's mix those together. All right, so that's a really dark teak brown in the beginning. Heavy concentration, black's very overpowering. So if you wanna lighten your brown a little bit, then just pull a lot more of that red and yellow in there. And then that's gonna make it a lot more chocolate color. All right, so that is looking really pretty. All right, so that's a nice look. This is also really helpful for creating the little shadows on the pumpkins. And it's also a nice accent on the stem. So I'm gonna take that same little bit brush. Let's do a little twist into that brown. So we've got a nice fine point again. And let's go ahead and do a little outline here. So these are the little rounded parts of the pumpkin. So it kind of looks like little upside down letter U. And then I want to define my leaves just a tiny bit more. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this brown, darken up some of that sage green, twist back into it. And also if you need it to be more fluid on the canvas, you can add just a teeny tiny amount of water. I'm gonna make it really fluid. And then I can start to go around some of those leaves and define those a little bit more. shadow in the middle and then let's do maybe just a tiny little stem accent with that darker shade of brown a little twist now into the brown And you can already see how that's really making these shapes kind of pop out in front. So that's helpful. 
My stems are also a little bit lost too, so I'm gonna do the same thing with those. All right, a little bit of water, a little bit more of this brown, and then we'll do a little accent here. And again, that water mixed in there with it keeps it defining and dark, but also light and delicate. That water really helps it be more delicate over the surface. And again, beginners at home, turn it flat. So you don't get a water run. See now, you can see that stem, so it's really showing up a lot more. And then notice here too, when I go to paint into some of these little delicate areas, I'm resting the weight of my hand on my pinky and that helps stabilize my hand. So it helps you do these tinier motions here. And then if you want to do one of those little curly cues, you can. We see those a lot at the tops of pumpkins. So a little line and a little curly cue and then flip it up. There you go, those are fun. You can also do those with a Sharpie too if you're a little uneasy with the painted part of that. All right, now we have some of those defining parts of the track to work in. So I'm going to switch back over to Little Buddy and you can use either black or like a dark charcoal gray. So a little bit of water here with my black. That was a little bit too runny on the plate, so I need to make sure and give it a little bit more, you know, thicken up the consistency of it so I don't get a run on my canvas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work into these little areas here. This is also definitely one of those areas where if you wanted to wait and let it completely set up and dry, you could use your permanent marker to fill in here. Again, the trick with permanent markers is they will die quickly when they meet wet paint. It's like instant death. So just make sure that your paint is always dry before you use a permanent marker on it. I can still see, okay, good. Just making sure you can still see. And always feel free too to, you can turn and rotate the canvas as needed to be able to have a better angle. Make sure you can still see. We're also about to do those tires too. 
And also with the tires, if you chose the black background, people always go, oh no. What do I do with the tires? <laughs> and you just want to make your tires gray. So I want to make, be sure and show that to you. So they still look like tires and they're dark and it provides the contrast that you need. All right, so here we go. I still need to do my tires. I also have this black line in it here to do. And now black tires. So we've got the line edge to do here on the sides. Right. Yay. Very good. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and define the truck with a little black line. You can do this with a permanent marker as long as it's all set up and dry, but if you want to paint it on, I want to make sure that I've got a nice thin line edge here. All right, so it is clean and dry, and see how thin it is on the edge? And you don't want any excess water in the brush. I'm gonna push back and forth here into the black, still making sure it is very thin. And then I will just take this all the way across. And that really helps it start to all feel like it's belonging together and more connected. And I definitely want to optimize the use of the long line edge for as much as I can. I can't handle the curves. It'll, you know, flare out and it won't work. But for as much as I can, I'm going to work around this shape. And then I'll come back in with my little bit and I'll finish out the curves. So again, check my end. Nice and thin. And then I'll work this in. And that's about as much as I can do. And I'm going to come in now with my little bit. There we go. Teeny amount of water. That'll help it be fluid, but not too much. Okay, spin it. Nice fine point. And 
we'll take this all the way around these curves. So you definitely have to come back in and spin, basically twist between your fingertips every time you go to load back up again so that it stays nice and thin. Let's go ahead and turn this. And let me say, there's definitely no shame in using a permanent marker for this. A lot easier. Again, just make sure the paint is completely dry and you'll be all set. So a lot of people love to use the Sharpie for this detail work, lining it out when you're done. I'm doing those tiny little windows in there. Make sure that when you do the black line around those, go around the shape and not inside of the shape or else you'll blacken out those little side mirrors. Call them windows, I meant to say mirrors. Little curve here. Make sure y'all can making sure I'm not in the way. I'm trying to bring it closer to you so you can see. And then this has definitely started to bleed through in here. This is all dry though. And that is a very intricate little pattern. And so I am gonna show you that, do a little bit of demonstration with a permanent marker so you get a feel for it. I'm not gonna make sure, make sure you do not put your hand into wet paint cause it's got a lot of tackiness happening here, but I wanna make sure I can still see that. So it's like a little tulip happening. And then I've got this little circle here, a little circle there. Yeah, I almost forgot where I was on that. All right, so that's that fun little swirly action there. And you can leave that just like it is or you can fill it in with like a different color, like in the tulip there. And then again, this is all dry. So this is another good example of a little bit of that permanent marker action, or you can use your little bit and a little bit of black paint. So fun little, fun little details. And then I'm also going to take my little bit brush, add a little bit of a white highlight back into the little tail lights there. So here's a little bit, teeny amount of white. And I'm gonna go ahead and come in with a little bit of white over this little tulip here. So. Just kind of fill that in. And then actually has a nice look. You see almost a little bit of that blue outline, which is fun. Just kind of still peeking through there. I 
And then we can do little tiny accents too of the white. So just a teeny amount. And let's add a little bit of water to it as well so it's a little bit transparent. So here we go. And a little bit and then let's twist into it. Let's pull this closer you can see like a little, just a light. Little accent here. And then that's kind of fun to do too, like inside the little window. Just a little bit of that reflective light happening. You could do like a little squiggly or like a little bit of that line work. And then a little curve here. It's pretty subtle, but. All right, and then you can see, I think you can see here how I did it. It's kind of a fun little. All right. Um, let's see, let's see. I want, let's do, let's do little buddy. I need little buddy for a little accent here on the bottom. There's little buddy. So if you want like a little white line here, it's kind of a nice accent, optional. You can add that too. So a little buddy, a little bit of this white. And I just I take that all the way across. a real thin transparent line of white again there's a little bit of water in the mix so it keeps this like almost looking like a really delicate little sketch And then I want a few more just right here on the on those mirrors that come out. So I'm gonna take my little bit brush and just do a little soft twist into that transparent white that has a little bit of water in it and just a little soft curve. So this kind of feels like you're making a little parentheses. Accent here on the tires too. And then we're down to lettering. And of course we've been working a while, so a lot of this is completely dry to where you could actually work in with your Sharpie here. So that'll make it a lot easier to begin with. And then you can, I recommend doing it with this first and then you can pull in your paint to come in over the top. And then we'll talk about some helpful hints when you're doing this too. So the tricky parts are the little tiny loops in the letters. So I'm gonna make sure that I avoid those with any part of the black line. So I make sure that my stroke with black is on the outside of every loop. So a good example of that, like here on the E, I make sure that line goes around that loop. You don't wanna make it on the inside or you'll close it off. And then we've got our thanks here.
sure this is all. I think it's kind of dry. I gotta make sure I watch where I put my hand and don't get into any wet paint. I got another loop right there, so I have to make sure I go around it. loop in the A so again work that loop around the outside coming up another loop on the K so I make I make sure I take it around the outer part same thing here another loop becomes a really delicate area, so again, just make sure you stay on the outside. So it's really easy for beginners to come in and have a lot more precision with this permanent marker. And you can do the same thing, like this design is with our traceable too. So I think a lot of people find that it's much easier just to trace all the way around this. And then just fill it in with your little bit. And then I do have to watch where my hand goes because I'm running into, see how I want to rest my hand here and I was about to rest it on top of that ink. Still a little bit wet and I feel like I would get a smudge so I need to be really careful. So yeah, be cool. And just if you're just, just now joining us, so please know we have that on a traceable, so that's all there for you. You don't have to freehand that. For years we got requests on how to do that, and so that's, we made it easy. And if you're working on a black surface and you wanna put this in over the top, I would take a pair of scissors and cut off the, this top part. Make, like two, make, you can make as many copies of this as you want to at home. And then uh, you can just, Cut that and then use your graphite paper again, place it on top and then trace and the graphite will show up over the top of this black paint. It's pretty sweet. All right, now let's come back in with a little bit and some black paint. And this is also when Mars black. This is also when a little bit of water is really helpful too. And remember the rule, keep your canvas flat so the water does not run and look like a mascara run. All right, so, but yeah, a little bit of water helps it become much more fluid and fill into those tiny areas. And then of course you wanna take your brush and do a little twist into that paint. Nice fine point. And then you can absolutely go over all this for a nice, painterly look. I'm not going to go over the whole thing right now, but you can definitely go over all of the lettering. It'll be your little secret. And then just fill this in. Now, sometimes I get the question what happens if I have a little uh, boo-boo with the paint? 
And if you get to it very quickly, if you hold it flat and use like a Q-tip or a tiny brush with a little bit of water, you can actually just kind of push it into that wet paint and then come back in with a little paper towel or another dry Q-tip and then lift it right off. So that's how we can remove little boo-boos. Now I will tell you, the Sharpie, it's not going anywhere. That's why they call it permanent marker. So you do have to be real careful with that. But I always say there are no mistakes, only possibilities. So usually we can find something creative to do with that, either painting over it and making something new in that one area. Like you can always put a flower over something. <laughs> You just never know. Flowers, they cover, oops, <laughs> little oopsies. You can, you know, put something decorative. Acrylic paint does cover very well, so you can always cover over something too. So just working in this, the fine details now. And a long time ago, at the beginning of this class, I said, hey, if you wanna make this just all year round, you can certainly add some little roses. I have roses in almost every painting that I do, so it's really easy for, uh, for you to find me doing a rose. I have lots of classes with the rose tutorials. In fact, I do have another pickup truck with roses in it online. So, there you go. I was like, I'm sure I have one. I did do, yeah. All right. Yay, that is so cute. All right. So very, very fun. You can always come back in and add a few more little details like I'm already seeing. Clean off my little bit brush here, do a little bit of white. You know, if you wanna add just a few more little details. Yeah, cool. So there we have it. There's our real cute little uh, fall pickup truck. All right, so we have everything that you need to do this on our website. We have all kinds of options. Um, you know, really inexpensive with just a digital download for the traceable all the way up to a full kit uh, with everything that you need and everything in between too. And if you can't find it, um, just email me on the top of every product page. There's now a form that says email me if you can't find it. And then we'll email you right back and give you a direct link to whatever product you're looking for. So just describe it to us and we'll, we'll get it for you. And if we don't have it, then we'll create it that day and send you the link for it. So works out really well. So yes, um, so again, thank you so very much for joining us today. We had a great time painting this for y'all. You can find everything that you need at tipsyartist.com. And we're so excited to be painting with y'all and I'll be seeing you again just all through the week, painting lots of lives on Facebook. But y'all have a beautiful rest of the day and we'll see you soon.